Hello everybody, and thank you for coming and joining me today. Looks like my mic is working, that's a good thing. I never know <laughs> when I do these live streams, I always come on and my my mic's not working. So, good a good start to this Friday stream. Looks like, I don't, actually I don't know how many people are here, I closed my other thing, but you'll notice. There it is. I've set up a little thing here. This was a little bit by accident, but we're going to treat this stream as a 300 subscriber celebration. And we'll see if we can get there on this stream or not, because there's the live sub count. We're so, so close. So we'll see if we can make it today. Does Kevin even like Americans? Travis, why would I not like Americans? <laughs> I have I have friends in the States. I never, I never generalize, you know, there's nice people all over the world. Attachment Studios, you're going to be, the, you're going to wait for it to get to, to get closer and then you, you, you'll click it at the, the last second. I should have, I didn't get a sound effect. I should have come up with a, we could have a little celebration sound effect, but. Let me see if I can just do one thing while I'm, you know what? Anyway, how are you guys, well, while I figure this out, how's everyone doing? How are you doing today? I hope you're doing good. Um, oh, you know what? I think I have it opened, what I'm looking for. I just minimized it. There it is. Yeah. Cool. A lot of people here. It's exciting. <laughs> so yeah, thank you guys all for coming. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, I didn't have a video up yesterday because I ran into some issues and I said, let's do a live stream today instead. And uh, normally, if you don't already know, I normally live stream on Twitch. I'm live every single Monday or yeah, pretty much every single Monday, unless it's a holiday or something. Uh, last week, I was also live on Tuesday. I did two live streams, or this week. This is my third live stream this week. Well, my goodness. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm live streaming primarily on Twitch, but every now and then we do these special YouTube ones uh, instead. So, here we want. We want a Q&A. We could do a little... I don't know how long what I planned to do is going to take, so we could we could do a little Q&A at the end. Um, these YouTube streams tend to turn into Q&As usually. The chat is just flying by. I'm going to have trouble keeping up with you guys today. <laughs> Mohammed, you don't know how to use Flexbox and Grid in my website. I'm going to be using a little bit. I don't know if I'm going to be using either one today, actually. <laughs> Uh, but I do have plans on having more content on that type of stuff, so. Pascal, I'm your favorite YouTuber. Thank you very much. Only 28 to go. I guess doing this, people see the, the little... Look at that, it's flying by. <laughs> Won't be long. <laughs> Edward Thompson, you loved the episode on 3D effects with CSS only. I did too. That was a really fun one for me. Uh, I learned a lot on that one. It was great having that with um, with Amit. And we have some more stuff planned. And actually, I'm planning on doing more collaborative efforts because uh, last Tuesday I had Adam Argyle on. Um, we just sort of talked about CSS. This was on Twitch. On Twitch, I had Adam on, uh, which I will be taking and turning into some YouTube content. So if you missed it, no problem. Don't worry about it. Um, but we're going to be doing some coding stuff together too. He's going to teach me some 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 fun stuff. Because as much as you guys like to call me, I see it all the time, uh, like in comments and and on Twitter, um, people calling me the king of CSS. I'm I'm so far from the king of CSS. There's so many people that know more about it than I do. Um, and you know, I think I'm a good communicator of how it works. And I I I think I I know my way around it. But you know. I don't mind Guru or Sensei and stuff like that. I, I think I'm, I'm decent with it, but there's a lot of other really good people too. And King sort of puts me on top and I don't think I'm on top. I just think I'm one of many who uh, know about it. <laughs> can we do Turing complete machine in CS? Can you do Turing complete in, uh, yeah. <laughs> Luke Kleins, thank you very much. Have a, I will have a beer on you, definitely. <laughs> thank you. Actually, if you don't know, I also make my own beer. I just kegged another one yesterday. So looking forward to trying that one out today. It's Friday. So at the end of the day, we can relax with the beer. Vince, having Coder Coder, I have talked to her. 
Um, but when I did talk to her, she was really busy, so I should get back in touch with her, but I know she's working on her course right now. Courses are so much work. I should be working on my course right now, but instead we're here doing a live stream. But courses are a ridiculous amount of work, but I'll get back in touch with her, because yes, I would love to do something with Coder Poder. The quality of the stream is amazing. Glad to hear that. I'm happy that it's good. Um, Laksh Deep Singh, should we use media queries with Flexbox or Flexwrap? Both seem to, it depends on the situation and what you're trying to achieve. Uh, I've used both. It, de it really depends. And if one works and it's doing the job, stick with it. If you try one and it doesn't do exactly what you're after, then try the other one. Or just use grid. <laughs> do I have a C? I don't know who said it. The chat is going so fast. A CSS roadmap question mark. Um, CSS roadmap. I don't have one. I, I hear a lot about the idea of a CSS roadmap. My issue is depends what you want to do. <laughs> um, but I, I guess at one point I should sit down and think about it. Paras. So okay, I might end up answering this multiple times. So I'm going to keep the question, the answer to my question, very short. Of what do I think of Tailwind CSS? Um, so I, yeah, I'm not going to deep dive it. I've talked about it a lot. I understand why other people like it, and it's not for me. I think that's the easiest solution or easiest answer <laughs> to give. CSS demystified. Someone is asking about it. It will be relaunching very very soon, uh, in maybe two weeks or so. I'm going to be opening the doors to it. So keep your eyes peeled. The best way to know is if you're on my newsletter, but I'll make sure to post on Twitter and here on YouTube as well when it does. Gautam Jane, do I prefer web dev, node, or Python? Um, yeah, we'll go with web dev because that's all I know. <laughs> all right. Yeah, I see. I mean, sorry if I miss any comments or anything. I'm not. I'm used to being on Twitch where the chat is a little slower paced. Um, so if I miss anything, I do apologize. Uh, but I'm going to. Would you like to post? Yeah, we have some flexbox and grid stuff coming up. Uh, Miracle Gaming. All right, and Anad, thank you very much for the super chat. Appreciate it. And it was Luke before, right? Luke, thank you very much as well. I think I said it, but then it got distracted as the chat moved by. So thank you both very much for the super chats. Super generous of you. Um, do I have a favorite CSS framework? Just writing my own CSS is my favorite way of doing it. Um, Neurotronic Esports, do I typically use CSS or SAS? I typically, if it's my own projects, I use SAS more often. The new SAS course launch date. I'm not giving a date until it's ready to go because <laughs> I see Vince, a few people asking about it now. So I am working on a SAS course. It's taking longer than planned. My kids are coming, my kids' school year is about to finish, which is going to slow me anymore. Um, so um, no promises. When it's done, then people will know when it's going to launch. <laughs> Kathir, how good am I at backend? I am not good. I'm very, very, very terrible. I, I, I just don't touch it. It scares me. Uh, how do you keep up with new things in CSS slash design? Uh, experimental CSS properties, do you keep in touch? How do you keep up? Um, so keeping track of things, I'll use a lot of can I use. Pavan, thank you very much for the super chat as well. Um, thank you very much for providing valuable content. No problem at all. Uh, yeah, so keeping up with CSS is pretty easy when that's your primary job. <laughs> so it makes my life, you know, that's what I do now is I teach people about CSS. So I can literally devote parts of my day to that. And a large part of it is through things like CSS tricks, Twitter, and seeing what people are talking about. I follow a lot of people who are actively working or involved on creating these things and helping push the spec ahead. So they're always talking about it. So that always helps too. Um, there's, yeah, CSS tricks newsletter is a good place or just CSS tricks in general. And then I also, whenever I'm researching anything, I'm usually on the MDM, so I'm learning about something. I want to make sure I'm saying all the right things when I'm planning out content. And then I end up on rabbit holes and I start clicking on links that, of things. And then I just go deeper and deeper. And then all of a sudden I found a, find a property I've never heard of. Um, and especially if I see a property in the MDM that has a little experimental, they have the little beaker thing next to it, I dive in there and try and see um, what it's all about. Um, but I try and keep my ear to the floor as much as possible. Or is, well, that's not the expression. 
there's an expression about keeping your ear open that I can't think of, but I, it's just, you know, that's what I live and breathe these days, so it's a bit easier. <laughs> The, do you have a play? Oh, I just the chat just left. Uh, someone was asking about a playlist for CSS, um, like to start. I have a really old uh, one. It's on my homepage. That's like the beginner pat. Like it's CS HTML and CSS for beginners. I think that's a good start. Uh, it, it's a little bit old now, just because I made it four or five years ago. So it is a little bit old, but I think it's still a really good series that goes into the very basics of CSS. From there. I, I have less of a path on my content here, sadly. Um, how do we create skeleton loading? I do have that in my list of things, Paras. Uh, so one day I'll have a tutorial on it, um, but it might be a little while. All right, a couple more questions and then I'm gonna jump in. Kathir, I already answered that. I'm terrible at backend. Uh, Wata, what will CSS look like five years from now on? Very good question. I'm very excited to find out. Uh, we're going to have a lot more power and a lot more control and it's going to be a little bit more complex than it is now. But um, <laughs> we were talking a bit about that with Adam Argyle because he's, if you don't know Adam Argyle, he's on the Chrome team. He's like their CSS evangelist for Chrome. And so he knows like everything that's up and coming um, and what they're working on and everything. So um, there's some really exciting things on the way and some of it does add complexity, but hopefully it's not just for complexity's sake. It should be to solve problems that people are having. Um, but yeah. Star Ash, old viewer, but new subscriber. That's all right. You don't, I mean, if people don't want to subscribe, you don't have to subscribe, but I do appreciate it. It's more of a vanity, vanity stat here on YouTube than anything else. Think and rewatch a CSS series from scratch. Uh, maybe one day I could. I have to. It, it's a lot of work to um, to really go through the whole thing. But um, we're almost at 300. We're getting there, guys. Pretty close. We're pretty close to 300. All right. So we're gonna jump in. I am gonna do some advanced anime. I keep saying it, and then you guys distract me. Miracle Gaming. I will be doing some animation stuff coming up. Advanced animations are not for me. This is what one of the reasons I like not. I don't like people saying I'm the king of CSS. Advanced animations is not who I am. I do layout and typography and the fundamentals of CSS and understanding Flexbox and Grid. And that's my that's my jam. Um, animations, really good animations. Tend like it depends what type of advanced animations you mean. Keyframes I can do stuff with. We're going to be diving into that on YouTube next month maybe. Um, but yeah, I, when it gets into SVGs and stuff like that, it's it's tough. People, the count, yeah, this is, the counter there is, like, YouTube actually finally added one. I think they saw people were using third-party services, so in your analytics now, you can actually get a real-time sub count, which is pretty cool. HTML, uh, CSS or HTML books. The only CSS HTML book I ever read is in my background, somewhere there on my shelf, uh, which is the classic um, HTML and CSS one. I just, I don't know if it, I haven't read it in years, and I don't know if it's out of date. Um, and I would say, if you're looking for newer books, there's a list apart, but I don't, or a book apart, I should say. I don't know if they have anything that's really like HTML, CSS um, specific or not. There we go, Amit's in the house. He can help with animations, yeah. So, and I, I, I think me and Amit have already agreed that we're gonna be doing some more stuff together. So uh, once we get around to that, that will be the, the collabs I do with, with Amit will be helping with the advanced animations. Ian, yeah, if you can do some advanced stuff with SVGs, you are a wizard and you should definitely let us know how you do it. <laughs> Two more to go, guys. Two more subs and we're there. Three. Oh, somebody unsubscribed. <laughs> That's all right. What plant is that? It's a, there's a name for it, but I don't remember. Uh, and it's also a fake plant because I'm in my basement. That am I there? Am I, my counter for me says 299999. Oh, there we go. It just rolled over. Thank you all. We made it. <laughs> now somebody's going to unsubscribe, right? It's going to go back down. <laughs> all right, so we hit 300. We might as well get started with what I wanted to do. Uh, so let me just move this over to here and we'll push this to go to my screen. Aha, there we go. We don't need to keep the chat there. I'm going to move the chat to this side here. 
Um, I guess we don't need the counter anymore since we hit it. So let me turn off the counter. There we go. We don't need that. And um, so, yeah, thank you all. We made it. <laughs> A basement must be chilly. No, it's my the ba where I live. Houses the basements don't get too cold. I have heating too, so. Ooh, thank you guys. Yeah, that's exciting. Um, Nora, I noticed you made a more JavaScript tutorials one to two years ago. Am I planning more in the future? It's as it. I make JavaScript tutorials when I find, like I did the intersection observer series because I started learning about them and I dove into them and started using them for a project I was working on. I'm like, oh, I should teach this. Um, I haven't been doing a lot of stuff lately so with JavaScript, so that's why there hasn't been too many tutorials on it. <laughs> Fun gamer, I'm excited about Windows 11. It looks like Windows is trying to be a little too iOS-y for my taste, but it looks kind of nice, so we'll give it a chance. Um, all right, so yeah, this is, I, I found this and it looked kind of cool and I wanted to try and make it into a website. So that's what we're going to be doing, uh, is trying to make this layout, which is a magazine layout. And I have a specific things that I want to focus on. Um, so this is on Behance. I'll throw this in there and full credit. This is by, well, let's credit Dewey Nguyen. Uh, I hope I said his name right, but he made this layout. I thought it looked pretty cool. So I want to make it. Um, thank you everybody for your subscription, uh, your, your congratulations. I do appreciate it. Um, G, G, B, D, I, thank you very much for the super chat. Super nice of you. Um, so what are we going to do? Let's move this on over to here. And I did, I, we're not using the same image. I don't have his images. So I found a picture we're going to use and we should have VS code right here with nothing in it. We're going to start from a, a blank slate to make this. Uh, so obviously we need an index.html and yeah, I need a few more to catch PewDiePie. <laughs> I don't think we'll be getting there, especially not when you're just talking about CSS, uh, style.css. Um, so let's, whoa, we're in the style.css file. Save that and let's do this. Um, and let's come here and do a link CSS. There we go. So we should be, let's just make sure this is working. Um, I think I can do this, right? Open with live server. And just to make sure this is working, body, background is red. Aha, perfect. Okay, so everything is hooked up and working properly. So we're ready to start working on it. And I, I sort of want to focus on a couple of different things for this. I want to focus, uh, the picture we can bring in afterward. Um, I, and I sort of want to see, I don't know if my resolution of my screens can be big enough to make this work as sort of like a spread that we can then change at responsive sizes. Um, but I sort of want to focus on the, the right hand side for now um, on this layout. And then maybe afterward we could squeeze the other thing in if we have time and all of that. Uh, da, 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 just seeing what's happening in the chat. Slow down a little bit now, which makes it easier for me. If ever people, you guys have questions, it might I might not get to them right away as I'm writing code, but um, you know, you can ask stuff anyway. This music is, um, I'm allowed to play it on my stream. <laughs> red is, I think red, it's the shortest. You know, it's only three characters and it just comes to mind really fast, so. Um, all right, so what do we need for, and I don't have a picture. It would be nice if I had an SVG for those glasses. But we're gonna focus on like the text here. So let's just say we have, uh, I guess it's an, should we do it? Oh, let's just do a main. It's sort of an article. So you know what, article, <laughs> we might as well. Um, I don't know if we need the main then, whatever, I'm gonna leave it. Um, so the article has an H1, which will be chip kid. We need some lorem. We have this underneath. So that's gonna be a paragraph. That paragraph should have a class on it, actually. Uh, so let's just call it subtitle. Or no, it's um, this. Hmm, is it a subtitle or is it a lead? I'm really going with the magazine. I think that would be considered the lead. So the lead is always like the first paragraph on a magazine article that's a little bit bigger, um, that tries to get you to read that so you know what you're going into. So we'll call that the lead. We'll just do like a lorem 10. It's not very many words. Um, this will be all with lorem. 
And then we get these paragraphs here and there's a block quote that's in there too. So let's start, we need two columns. So let's just do a, uh, let's just call it, um, do I call it columns? Do I call it, we'll call it uh, article, article body. Article body is going to have P times three. That looks like three paragraphs, maybe four, but we'll do P times, no, we'll do P times four. Uh, with lorem, they're pretty long, 45? I don't know, we can always play around with that a little bit. And after the third paragraph, we'll throw a block quote in here too. Block quote of lorem one, two, 10, let's just say. There we go. I think that's all we really need. Uh, I'm not putting page numbers on the bottom. If you want me to, I guess we could do that. Um, as I said, should we look at how I could do that image too? Yeah, I'm not going to do the, the glasses image across the top, but why don't we just, from the very beginning, try and make it look sort of magazine-y, and then we can see how we could actually get this to work at small screen sizes too. Um, so let's just throw, now this is making me think. Yeah, we'll just throw an image here, and I'll just call it um, article the uh, main image. Not the best names in the world, but whatever. Image and I already have a picture to use. And we'll just put for the, where's my alt? Let's turn word wrap on. Uh, my alt can be a uh, man wearing glasses in the sun. Uh, whatever, man wearing glasses should be fine. I actually found out I have an, an issue on my own site um, that we need to look at. All right, let's just see what's happening in the chat before I keep going. I'm not planning on doing the glasses. If I have time, maybe I could. I could. Uh, we could make an SVG out of that. They're not very hard to make by the looks of it. But it's a subtitle. The lead is the yeah. Whatever. I guess it, yeah. But this isn't the lead really. Isn't the lead usually like it's a like? I guess it is a subtitle. No, oh, they accept cookies. You want, there we go. I've accepted the cookies. Cookie banners are like the bane of my exist, like of web development in general these days. I think. Um. Am I gonna? No, I'm not gonna make them pages flip, Mohammed. We're just gonna do straight CSS for this one. Um, cause I don't think it's gonna be very complicated. I wanted something that'd be fun and, um, not too hard to do. So we're just going to go with regular CSS. Uh, and I tend to do that for, uh, if I do a bigger project on YouTube, which I know it's been a really long time and people have been asking me for something bigger. I do have something cool coming next week, actually. Um, though we're not writing any CSS in that one. Um, but yeah, next big project I do, will have SAS in it. Uh, you know, we need some fonts here. I don't know what font that is, but let's see if we can find fonts.google.com. Um, so it's a saw serif for sure. We're going to have two fonts. Um, so the main body font, like I'm looking here, which is not the biggest. Can I zoom in on this? I don't know how Behance works. I, don't, I can't seem to zoom in on it. What if I just make it bigger? It looks like a regular sort of sans serif. This one's like a more narrow one. The letters are very squished um, and a bit more squared off. So we definitely have two different fonts coming in here. I'm not going to try and match them perfectly, um, but we could do like an open sans, I think, for this one. So, or do we have, is open sans variable? Let's see if we can use just variable fonts because it makes life, oh, Oswald might be perfect for that one. So we're definitely going to grab Oswald. Uh, da, 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 just <laughs> for the, okay. I always show this trick. Just, if you're gonna use one of the open, um, one of the variable fonts from Google, just select two styles. It doesn't matter which, or just, the easiest thing to do is choose the light one and the bold one. Um, and we only have a weight, we only have the weight axis that we can play with as a variable font here. Um, so if they had the italic one, I would take those, but I'm not gonna use italic anyway. So we'll just take those. And I'll explain why you take the, the smallest and the biggest one in a second. Um, so that one's good. Let's go back to my fonts, only variable and, uh, not railway, not rubric. Uh, maybe Carla, Hebu, 
What's Hebu? I've never seen Hebu. It doesn't look bad. We'll go with Hebu. I like the name. Uh, so again, I'm going to take the, the lightest one and I'm going to go all the way and take the biggest one. And now let's go and get this. So we have both of them in there. Hebu and Oswald. Good. Okay. So we'll grab that. We'll drop that in up here. Uh, let's just call this uh, chip kid, I guess. Um, and then we need these two guys right here. So we'll copy those guys. We only need a few things. Actually, before I get to my body even, um, let's do our root. We'll set up a few custom properties. So we'll have, let me just, okay, let's just do a, let's just, come on, come on. There we go. Okay. So here we'll have my, Hebu is my body. So font family body. Um, and then here we'll do font family heading. And we can do that. Then my colors, I think there's only two colors, right? We're gonna have color primary. I'm just gonna, just in case I decide, we'll do that. HSL, uh, you know what? I'm gonna do yellow, RGB. What's yellow in, in hex? Red, no. Is it 00FFFF? Is that yellow? Probably not. No, not even close. <laughs> Whoops, what's yellow? Oh, FFFF, and then the zeros. That's okay. Um, okay, so let's just do FF, so it's pure yellow, and then I'm going to switch that to an HSL. There we go. Uh, so that's my yellow, and then my color neutral. Is it worth doing? Whatever. I'm still going to do it. 900 is HSL. Um, it doesn't matter. So 0, 0%, zero 0%, percent, zero percent is black. And then my, oh look, VS Code doesn't notice the new syntax. Uh, neutral 100 will be HSL 0, 0%, 100%, not 10, 100. The new syntax for HSL and RGB, you do not need commas on anymore, so. Uh, so you know what, let's be consistent. It's annoying though that um, VS Code hasn't caught up with that. You probably have an extension that can do it for us. Um, and I guess some people were asking about font sizes and stuff. So, um, and clamp, I could see the title here. So let's say font size, um, title or XL, we'll call it XL is we could you like, this could be, I like doing clamp for these types of things where it's a really big font size. This is, we have to play with it. So I don't know, but let's say the smallest is three RAM. Then we can do a one RAM plus 10 BH. And then we can say that the biggest is, I guess, it looks pretty big. And we'll see if that works from there. Font size. Um, so 400 for me is my body size. So we'll just say it's 1.125 rem, because that's not a bad font size to have. Um, so my font size 500. Whoops, 500. I don't know why font sizes, I always go from big to small. But for my colors, I usually go from, anyway, doesn't matter. Uh, font size 500 is sort of my subtitle, I guess. Uh, whatever, 1.5 rem. I don't have a lot to do here, so I'm not setting up like a proper typography system. Font size 600 will be my block quote. Uh, we'll just say that's a 2 rem. And we'll play with it from there. One reason I really like doing them here is if we decide that we need some breakpoints or to change these, we can do that in a media query, which is really nice. Um, let's just see what's... Vince, meaning ask, if you're using SAS, is it better to use SAS variables for color or custom properties? I like custom properties for everything these days. Um, I do have a video somewhere on YouTube where I look at how I use a SAS map to give, to create my custom properties for me. Uh, I like custom properties a lot just because you have a lot more control over them. Like they're, they're custom, there's still variables within the browser. So it just leaves a lot of doors open uh, for different theming and different things that you can do. It's maybe less important for colors, uh, but there's so many cool things coming to colors too that are down the road for SAS, like um, mixing colors that you could do with custom properties. So I think getting used to using custom properties is, is always a good thing. Um, even if you're using SAS. 
HSL is nice because you just get control over it. So like this is my yellow, and then if I need a brighter yellow, or if I need it like a less bright yellow, I can just play with the saturation. I can go closer, you know, wash it out. Or if I need it, you know, I can go closer to white by increasing the brightness, or I can go closer to black by decreasing the brightness. And then, you know, you're, you don't have to worry about, like with RGB or hex, you're just, I don't know. It's, it's hard to, to do that stuff. No, I'm not cloning the image. Uh, this picture is not going to happen with, with CSS. I have an image that I actually used because <laughs> that would be really hard. Uh, the next thing I do want to do, I don't need a, a proper reset, do I? Let's just do a body h1, h2, h3, block quote, block quote, uh, margin of zero, padding of zero. I don't know if does does block quotes come with padding on them? I'm not sure. Anyway, I'm just gonna reset all of it. Um, is there anything else I want to do as a reset? Normally, I would bring in a bigger reset, but we don't have too much uh, images. Um, display block and max width 100%. It's a pretty stand. I don't remember all the stuff I include in a reset because I never write resets every time. I just always copy and paste them <laughs> and, or use like a starting repo template that I can just reuse every time. So I don't have to re... So I'm trying to remember all the things that I might want to reset. Um, we'll stick with that and see if we have to change anything else. You could make this image in SVG if you wanted to, but yeah, I'm not gonna, <laughs> we're not even gonna try. Um, so, okay, before we do anything else, let's just say H1, uh, or actually, I don't even have an H2. <laughs> I just thought of that. So whatever, H1 um, font family is my font family heading. There we go. Oh, come on VS Code, don't do that to me. Usually if you choose from here, there we go. Okay. Um, actually, let's just come up, body. Um, font family here too, font family is my font family body. Then we want to have my font size is my uh, font size 400. The, what else do we need? You know what? I just saw it's using justified text, which makes it look nice. We'll see if we can get the justified text to look good. We might not. Uh, I should have thought of that ahead of time, but that's okay. <laughs> Francesco, I could do that as the reset. Um, I just, I don't know. Oh, you know what? I forgot the most important one. Uh, I don't know if we're going to need a pseudo element, but just in case we do. Uh, before. And my star after box sizing border box never ever leave home without that um should you preview your page before making more changes you should pre i don't have anything to preview yet though so like right now i'm just setting up the basics so i don't need to preview my page i will once i start doing layout 100 percent i'll be looking at it um i had my uh, we called it lead even if it's not actually a proper lead uh, font fam actually you know what I'll do let's just do h1 dot lead and it was my block quote so again this isn't like you could even have a utility class to set that if you wanted to um, which would be perfectly fine um, I know I'm not the biggest fan of tailwind but I am a fan of utility classes just in a little bit more limited fashion than tailwind does it yeah <laughs> I had a, a business card stuck to the bottom of my glass there for the electrician I recently needed. <laughs> Double decker couch. Yeah, no, I agree. I don't know. I'm going to see it. I might, if we have time for it, um, I might grab a JS library or something to do justify text. Because normally on the web, you do not do justify text. Mohammed, do I know Dev Ed? I know him. I've talked with, well, talked. I've talked online with him. Um, I don't know if what would happen. I know he was thinking of moving to Canada at one point. So we were chatting a bit about that and what it's like to live here. I don't know if, I guess COVID got in the way of that, or is he here and I just don't know it? I'm not sure. <laughs> I haven't watched a DevEd video in a long time, actually. 
I should see what he's up to these days. Um, H1 lead block quote. Uh, okay, now I guess we should look at what my page looks like. <laughs> uh, so let's pull it up. Um, okay, so what do we need to do? Obviously we need to, so actually let's do this and where do we put my design so I can see it? Okay, how did I do this again? I have my article and then my image. Whoopsie doodles, we don't need to open that. Uh, I'm gonna leave the, uh, I don't like leaving it off screen. We'll just do it really small like that for the moment. Um, okay, so we are doing responsive. So there's a few things that are important. Oh, I forgot to show you the fonts. Ha, and, okay. Before I go any further, if you get the variable fonts off of Google, to actually give yourself access to all of them, um, instead of having to select every single one of them, here, this only works if it's a variable font. Don't do this if it's a regular font. You have the 100 and 900, you just put two dots there. And that means you have access to the whole range of them. So just like that, we have access to all the font weights. And you can see doing that actually switch this back over to the 400 from the 300. So that makes life a little bit easier. Um, actually, another thing. Okay, we'll do my H1 now. H1 font. We'll do my font size first. We'll see what that looks like. Is my font size XL. And then we also had the um, text transform of uppercase. And let's just go in and mosey on over there and see what that gives us. That's not terrible. It's not quite the font family I wanted. Did I declare my font family? I did. Is that really the right one? Is that Oswald? I thought it was more compressed. Anyway, we'll stick with it. Um, I guess all of these, they all looked, oh no, my lead wasn't using it. Um, so here what we could say is font weight. Let's see what the 900 gives us. We'll go with that. So actually the font doesn't look big enough. Let's just see, that's as big as it's getting. And if we make this smaller, Let's just see if the clamp is working here. So the clamp's working. So the small sizes, it doesn't look too bad. Um, line height, font size, line height of, whoops, line height of one. And actually my body here, let's just do a line height of 1.6. Um, so here on my font size XL, we can make the bigger size of this get bigger than seven rem. That, that looks like we'll be getting to a, a better size at the large screen size. So ideally what's gonna happen, I think this image is actually perfect right there. Um, so actually I like that the image is touching the edge of the viewport, but I don't really want anything else here to touch the edge. So there's a couple different ways we could do that. One way is just to wrap everything in a div, um, which probably makes the most sense to be honest. Um, there's a few different ways we could do it. I'm going to show, because this is just like a really not realistic example of something you would necessarily be doing, um, we'll do it the, the cheating way. So we're not changing the HTML. <laughs> it's not cheating at all, but article star not uh, an image. We could do um, padding of 2rem. Or zero two rem. We could do that. I don't know if I like that, but we could do that. Um, so it's adding padding to the left and the right of everything, like all the direct children except for the image. So this is getting padding left and right. This is getting padding left and right. And this big block is getting padding left and right. Again, not an ideal solution probably, but it works in a way. So that's okay. Uh, the other thing we want to do on the article, so we can say article is a display of grid, um, which is going to work. Where am I missing? After my H1. Uh, low list height, whoops, line height. And I have another typo somewhere, 41. Ah, thank you. Ah, thank you very much. That looks much more like the font I was expecting to have. <laughs> Thank you very much, your uh, badge guy. Oh, a few people mentioned it. Thank you guys, everyone who mentioned it. I appreciate it. Lift line 54. Oh, this? So it's any direct child. So this, like if you just do this, it's any direct child of your article. So if I do that, my image gets the padding and then my image also won't touch the side because it's getting the padding on the left and the right. So by saying, all direct children, but not my image. 
Or, uh, no, yeah, this is actually a better use case for not. I was thinking we could use the is selector as well, but I don't think the is selector makes a lot of sense there. You know what, the lead doesn't use this font. So I'm gonna take that off here and I'm gonna move the font weight up here. I think that makes more sense. Let's turn formatting on because that's gonna help me out a little. There we go, okay, that's better. Um, so there we go. All right, so I'm gonna use a grid for my main layout and I'm just declaring it here. So if we have collapsing margins or anything like that, um, it's going to work all the time. But then we can do an at media screen, uh, whatever. <laughs> I'm lazy with my media queries. I don't bother most of the time. Um, at media min width 40M. Um, if you want to know why I use M, you can follow me on Twitter. I went on a big rant about it the other day. I will, I'm planning a video though on it specifically. Um, at, we can do grid template columns. Actually, I'm trying to think if this is going to be the best thing to do, but let's just say 1FR, 1FR. Whoops. I'm so used to SAS guys and nesting my media queries that I do this all the time. Article. I forgot to uh, get my selector in there. And then grid template columns, 1FR, 1FR, 40M is going to be too narrow, 50. Um, and then we could actually use this same selector. So actually, let's just take my media query down. Uh, we could use that same selector. And I can even do it here, I guess. But um, I want grid column of two over negative one. Okay, okay. So, um, okay, and then for my image then, I need my image to go from the top to the bottom, which actually gives me a little bit of a problem if I wanna use grid, now that I think about it. Um, because of how, well, actually, maybe it's okay. Let's try. Um, I don't know if this is gonna work. Uh, art, I'm just doing article just because I, I didn't give it a class. Um, grid row one over three, is that gonna work? Oh, um, and then height 100%, object, object fit cover. Let's see if this works. You know what? I have another solution that might actually work. Oh, that worked. Cool. Okay. There we go. Um, so at the small screens, it sort of just makes sense. We have it like this. Then we're going to get to the bigger screens and the layout breaks across two. And then what's going to happen is when the layout gets to an even bigger size, um, at one point, this text should be able to fall into like our two column. Oh, look at that. They added like a little swipey thing in Firefox when you're in the touch mode, or maybe that's always been there. I don't know. I'm not always in touch mode. Um, but this text here, I want it to switch um, to being two columns. So to be able to do that, what we want to do, let's go see how I did this in my HTML. So here I'd made my article body and I did this on purpose. So what I want to do for the article body is, we'll do it here just in case we need a media query, but I don't think we do. Um, so we have my dot article body and we're going to say that it has columns of two, but say there, we want them to be 40 CH. And this is one of those underused CSS properties. So let's see if this works. It's not working. Why am I not getting called? Oh, there it is. It is. It just, my 40 CH is too big. Cool. Nice. So I think a few things I want to change. Um, so let's change this 40 to a 30. So there we go. We got two columns. Ha, great. Um, so at this side, ah, that it is working. Perfect. 30 is a nice number. So you can see there we have my two columns. Um, so here it's one. It breaks into two because there's enough room for it. it goes back to one because there's nine. It's almost like a container query, but not quite. Um, and then we get to back to our two columns. And that's looking pretty cool, actually. I like that. Um, the order, I think, in, doesn't matter, actually. Uh, yeah. 
so one thing it's important, I see someone mention the object fit worked. Um, this is only like, it's, it's really specific how this is set up because I said that the image had to go from column one to a uh, row one to three. Let's turn on my article grid. Um, the reason I was like, oh, this might not work is because you can't, because I didn't declare my rows and it's implicit rows, it's not explicit rows. So I didn't say I, I have rows. They're just automatically being generated. I couldn't actually use the negative number to tell it to start at the bottom. The negative numbers in grid, if you want to use them to say like, this is the start and that's the end, they only work if you've declared your grid template columns or grid template rows. Um, but I knew I had three just because I know I had one for this, I knew I had one for that, and I had one for the whole body. So I knew that there was three lines. So we have one, two, three, and then four at the bottom. So I said that height 100% is important because if not, the image isn't gonna grow. The image would actually just stay at its normal size. It just has that space to live. So I'm saying the height is also 100% and then the object fit cover allows it to be cropped um, similar to a background image. The other thing that's important on that is, what else is important on that? I guess that's it. The other solution I was thinking is if that didn't work, I could use position absolute, but that I don't know if it would work. Absolute position with grid is amazing. Um, it, it, it's really cool, but I, I, I try to avoid absolute positioning when possible. Um, another thing in this layout, actually, that I just thought of is the gap was really big. So when you do use columns, you can use a gap. It looked really big, but I think the problem is if I follow how big they uh, had it, it's not gonna get big enough, but we're gonna change this here. Um, let's do this. I mean, really it's a magazine layout. They would be equal size, but maybe we want to throw a min max on that first one. So the min, min max, can I do a 50% as the min and then a max of, I'm just going to try uh, a number and see what it looks like. I'm worried it's going to break everything. Oh, the 50 is going to be too big because of the padding and stuff. Oh, maybe it's just too big in general. Or is that min max? See, I don't, with min max, this might have to be. Can't I do that? Or is the minimum, it's doing the percentages, the max. Uh, so if I did like, no, it's not gonna work the way I want it to. You could probably do it. Oh wait, it's not like that, that's why. <laughs> Maybe it would work. <laughs> 30%, let's try again. And what did I say? Let's just try 30 rem. That might work better. It is working better. Kevin, you got to get these things right. So maybe that's a little bit nicer. Uh, maybe we could actually bump that to 40 and 40. Um, so it just means that really big screen sizes at one point, like this guy doesn't keep increasing in size. So here, ooh, that's a problem. See now what it's, it's using it's using the 40 as the minimum in this case, instead of the 40%. Um, so instead of a min max actually, here I could say, use whichever is smaller. Let's just do a min, use whichever is smaller. Is 40, whoopsie doodles. My USB drive disconnected and reconnected. 40, which is smaller, 40% or 40 rem? That will probably make more sense. So now it's, is it 40% or 40 rem is smaller. So ha, that's what I wanted. So not a min max, I just wanted a min. So now it's at 40% because 40% is smaller than 40 rem. But then once the image gets to 40 rem, it locks into a certain size. I think that works better. And this is more for websites and not print. So we don't really get that two page layout. I just think this overall looks a little bit better. Um, I'm also gonna do another thing here, which is my article body is going to have a max max width on it as well max width of we have two columns so two columns we could probably go as big as 80 ch and i like ch oh we can go bigger than that 120. let's see what that looks like are we hitting the maximum 100 maybe i like ch when it that looks pretty good like a maximum um i like ch just because it's going to react to the font size um so for that, it's good. So if I change the font or the font size in here, it would react to that because the CH character is, char it's literally characters. Um, it's an estimation. It's based roughly on the letter zero. Some fonts, it's not included. I think if it's not, I think if the font doesn't have the information, it even 
goes to an M anyway, maybe? Someone might correct me on that, though. I could be wrong. Um, this is, I see somebody asking, those grid lines are from the, this is Firefox. So if you're in Firefox and you can do the same in Chrome, you go to layout and then you get a, like a grid overlay, uh, which is the greatest thing in the world. If you're using grid, uh, Chrome also has one now as well. And there's also in Firefox, there's a flex inspector. I'm not using flex, but there is a flex inspector and there is one coming to Chrome. Um, I think it might be in Canary right now. There's a flex inspector. Maybe it's even in Chrome, the full version now. I know there's like dev tools with it. Um, they, they added more dev tools to Chrome's Flexbox stuff anyway. Um, let me just see what else is happening in the chat before we keep on going. I'll make my face a little bigger. <laughs> well, there's, we're still, we're over 300. We, we did it guys. There we go, I can turn that off again. Um, it seems Gap is not supported in Safari. It is, it's, it's supported in Safari now. Or did, I know they had an issue with 14.1 and I think things rolled back a little bit because there's bugs, but as far as I know, it's available um, in Safari. Um, Flex Inspector sounds like the gym police. <laughs> Chrome has it already. The Flexbox one, that's good. I, I just wish the, the Flex, I still prefer the Flex Inspector in Firefox because it shows you some stuff that the Chrome one doesn't, but I really like those little buttons that the Chrome one gives you where you can change your alignment really easily. That's super cool. Uh, yeah, really nice. I use, I'm always, well, I'm primarily in Firefox, so sometimes I don't notice when new stuff comes to Chrome. Doesn't it? Let's go check out Chrome and we'll do a little, let's find a window I can open. Okay, we'll just do here. Pull this over. Let's go to Code Pen. I know there is an inspector. I just don't know if it's this, it's not the same anyway. That's a secret project I'm working on. Uh, let's just do um, div times three with lorem five. And then here, let's just say body display flex. And then uh, let's go back to this one. So you, no, not that one. There we go. That one. Um, let's go see inspect. Uh, what do we get? What's new? Go away. Where's my, oh, this is good old. Okay, let's inspect you. There we go. So we get the little flex thing here. So there is some sort of, I knew this. So this is cool where you can like change how the flex direction, you can change the wrap, no wrap. So like this is really, really cool. Um, the only thing I don't think it has is, do so you have a grid overlay? Oh, it has flex box overlays too. Ha! So we do have some flex box overlays as well, which this one's on. This is all the stuff from CodePen though. So we're getting a big mess of stuff in here. Um, so I don't, I, I'm sure the one I'm actually using is in there somewhere. Is it this? Nope. Anyway, you can see there, this is all like Flexbox visualizations. It doesn't have the same as Firefox. Definitely has more information on like how the sizes are being calculated and stuff though. But that li the little, um, where is it? Oh, we are just on it, on the styles. This little thing is so cool. I love this so much. All right, little side tangent, we can leave that. Um, okay, next thing I want to do is I want to fix one thing that's a little, actually, that shouldn't be happening. Why do I still have margins? I must have made a typo somewhere else because <laughs> I still have margins on everything. Um, because no, one thing that is a little bit annoying with columns is you get this with your, if you have margins on, because this paragraph is starting here, this has a margin on the top, but then like this is the middle of the paragraph. So there's no margin in the middle of a paragraph. So if you're using margin top on stuff, you get problems like this. So, um, whoops, we don't want to do that. I can close this and we can shrink this back down. There we go. Uh, uh, this one problem with the mobile one is you have to shrink this down first and then you can shrink this down. Okay. So, uh, what did I say we wanted to do? I just got completely distracted. Oh, the margins. 
What ha I put margin zero. I must have made a typo. Body. Oh, I did body, but I didn't do my paragraphs. Paragraph. There we go. Um, and then I, I got this from Andy Bell and I really like it. So I'm gonna use it here. Uh, we'll do it before my H1, before my body. Utility classes, I guess here. Uh, we'll just call it flow. And then we do flow, uh, flow. Uh, margin top of, uh, margin top. Flow, select all the direct children. Um, and actually this is one uh, where I always did it as not um, first child, right? No, I didn't do that. I did plus plus. People want me to do the, the not first child. This just is lower specificity. Um, and there's even a way now we can, there, instead of, anyway, there, there's ways of doing it on the not selector one to lower the specificity now, but I'm just gonna stick with this. Uh, we'll say margin top, and I'll do color on it too so we can see what this is actually doing. Uh, but margin top will be 1M. And it's really handy doing this with a, a var. Uh, we'll call it flow spacer, comma, 1M. So the default is gonna be 1M because this is an undefined custom property. So the default is 1M, but if you need to overwrite it somewhere, you can overwrite it. Um, and I said we'd add a color red there. So let's just say color red, because what I'm gonna do is start by coming in and on my article body, we can add flow. So it's like document flow. And you can see it's selected everything except the first paragraph in there. So by selecting everything except the first paragraph, that means they all get the margin top. Now we don't want them to be red, so we leave that off and they all get the margins on them. Um, so I can actually come in my article and add a um, class is equal to flow here too. And then we get, um, because this it is set to one M, it's going to follow the font size. Um, so if you find it too big in some places, you can always modify that a little bit. Um, and you know, there's nothing stopping you from doing other stuff too. And the reason doing margin top instead of margin bottom, um, you could set up something similar using margin bottoms if you preferred where you're just, it's, this is nice because it's no specificity with this. So the not selector would use, would bump the specificity a little bit. Um, but you could do like star, whoops. If you prefer using margin bottom on stuff, you could do a uh, star not, um, uh, last child and so you could do that and use margin bottom instead if you prefer that um, but I'll go with this again it's lower specificity so it, yeah it's called the lobotomized owl and it, this has the only so flow does have specificity to it but this has none and so the advantage with that is uh, it's just easier to overwrite if you need to for something um, but again we have the flow spacer that we can also modify so just to show you actually why the flow spacer school is I can use the same one everywhere, but then I could come on my article and say that my flow spacer is three or four M let's make it gigantic. And then, uh, oh, that's my whole article. So there it's doing it for everything. Let's save there. I could do it just on my article body and say that my flow spacer here is four M and it's going to overwrite it only in this area and everywhere else is still using that default value. So that's why it's kind of cool to do it that way. And again, that was, I got that from Andy Bell. Um, he uses it quite a bit and I thought it was a good idea. So I started using it. Um, yeah, we're not gonna justify the text cause it's not gonna look good, but so far so good. That's there, my spacing's okay. We're just gonna come and say that my lead, lead has a font size of font size 500, I think. Whoops, you need a dot at the beginning. There we go, that looks better. Uh, this also, we can throw a max width on here. Max, max width of like 20 CH. Ooh, that's way too small. 35. Um, I did notice in the original, um, maybe that's too short now. I did notice in the original um, article, let's go see if I can find my original picture. I lost it. Did I close it? Oh no, it's here. Um, the, that, Looking at here, like, see how it's not the full length across the article, so we can limit the max width on that. It's probably the easiest way. You could use a BR somewhere too. Um, but something like that, I think, works. So it can stretch across, but we're just saying don't be too long because we don't want you to. What if the column breaks right in? It is breaking in between paragraphs right now. Um, 
it, you won't get uh, KC. So with the column property, um, it doesn't add margin where like it creates breaks. So here, like this paragraph at the bottom, it is, this is like, this is all one paragraph here. It won't add anything to the top of this because it's only a fragment of it. This whole paragraph is getting a margin top, um, but it won't affect this here. This is Firefox nightly right now, Uniba. Um, oh man, I keep shrinking that without closing this down. We don't have a lot left to do. There's a couple of interesting things that I have left though. Um, so let's do our block quote and then we'll look, worry about that letter. This, that was just a drop cap. So we're gonna see if we can make that a drop cap, but let's just style the block quote first. Um, I'll do it here just cause it's sort of like generic block quote. I didn't give it a class or anything. Uh, font size was var font size 600. And it was also a text align center, I believe. Uh, we'll do a line height. Oops, I like line height right after my font size. Line height. I don't know if we'll keep that line height of one. I don't know if I like that center align on there. 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 .1, there we go. Um, but one thing we'll definitely do on it um, is the margin bottom is also gonna be one M just so it's equal spacing on the top and the bottom. And just cause we can, let's do a block, block quote. I talked about this on my Tuesday video. Um, before content is open quote. Oh no, whoops, don't put it in quotation mark. I'm so used to having content like that. There we go, open quote. And you get your op op opening quotation mark automatically for free. <laughs> and I think if we, the design only had one, oh, let's open up the design again. Oh no, it had it at the beginning and at the end. That's okay. So we can do that and then I can just duplicate you and say the after is a close quote. There we go. That way you don't have to worry about it in your HTML and you don't have to have it like with the quotation marks um, inside your block quote. You can just put the text and then it, it drops those in for you. So I sort of like that. And it's not like from a semantic point of view, having the quotations on there doesn't really do much. Um, having it in a block quote is what's important. The quotation marks are really just a visual clue for somebody looking at it. Can you prevent typographic widows and orphans with columns? Not that I know of. Um, there are ways of doing it for print, but I don't know if there's ways of doing it with columns. You can prevent things because it is, if you're using like regular paragraphs like this, um, it, it works really well when it breaks across like that. Um, but if you have, like, let's just say that my article body uh, dot article body P. Oh, no, I'll show you two cool things. P, uh, let's just put a border of one pixel solid black. So like if these were cards, rather, like it's really awkward that it breaks across now because the way the border is working. Um, so you can, when you declare columns, you can do, I just did a video on this, break inside avoid. Nope. Or is that, do I do that on the paragraph? I just, just did this on a video. There we go. Okay, so it's on, it's on the paragraph itself. So you can tell items that they're not allowed to break. So that way it sort of keeps them together or it sort of, it always keeps them together. They won't break across two columns. So that you can do, but widows and orphans, I think are really hard to, to, to have problems with. Um, another thing that's really cool um, with columns is column, oh man, what's it called? Column rule, haha, <laughs> thank you. Column rule, let's do two pixels solid yellow just because we haven't used it. All right, let's do something you can see, red. Check that out. <laughs> it makes a vertical line for you in between them. And why this is super cool is let's just say we wanted three columns that were smaller just so we can actually see them. So it's putting it in between each, but then when we get to two columns, it goes to only having it in between those two. And then if we did get down to one column, there's none. I love that so much. <laughs> so that's your column rule. Uh, we don't really need it right now, but um, yeah, if you need vertical spacing between your columns, perfect. That's just undo actually to get back to what we had. There we go. Um, 
Yeah, I see, I see some people talking about something with the, the widows and orphans. I know there is the property, but I'm pretty sure when it says top of the page region or column. Oh, maybe it works in columns then. Um, but I do know it's, it's I think, much more for print. Like if you're printing things um, and making a print media query, but I could be wrong. Okay, um, so that's working. I think it's actually looking really good. Um, so I want to do my drop cap now. So the drop cap is surprisingly easy to do. Um, and it's actually sort of what inspired me to start with this in general, because there's not a lot of time you need drop caps on the web. But if you're doing articles, I think it could be really good. Um, so article body. Okay, I'm gonna get really specific here. <laughs> We're gonna do article, article body p first child uh first child so it's only going to select it's only selecting the first child that is if it's a paragraph that's inside of article body um and i'll, I'll give so <laughs> all right well let's just style it oh you know what first child first letter so first letter is a pseudo class a pseudo element that we can use so i'm placing this pseudo element on my pseudo class of first child. <laughs> so lots of pseudos going on. Um, here, just so we can make sure we, you guys can see the whole thing. There we go. And if I did it right, we should be able to say color is red and it should change. Ah, it did. Good. <laughs> it would look kind of silly if that didn't work. Um, the joy of live. <laughs> I can usually hit undo if something doesn't work if I'm recording and just edit it out. So I could say font size is 3M. Now it's not gonna be as nice as a proper drop cap Ooh, that's problematic too. Um, it's okay. Um, real drop caps on, like if you're using print software, you can, can you have so much control over them. It's wonderful. Um, in this, what we actually wanna do is a float. So float, oh, is this gonna work because it's in columns? It does, okay. Um, so you can see it does work, but there's an issue with the positioning of it. Um, and this is just because of the way um, the letters and fonts are calculated. So you do have to play around with it a little bit to get it to look good, as you can see. Um, and you can't really say, actually, is there, there might be something for how many lines big it is, but I don't think so. Um, I might be, I'm thinking of InDesign right now. The other, it's so a lot of the issue with this and getting it to line up property, properly is just like, if you select something in CSS, and that's not gonna show me, properly because for whatever reason but here let's just select kid see how when i select kid there's all this space on the why is it looking it up with anyway that's so funny i'm getting definitions <laughs> i didn't even know i had grammarly installed in firefox um when i select this text though you're getting that space on the top and the space on the bottom there so that's why when i did my 2m here or was it three when i did 3m like it looks really terribly aligned it's sticking out the top a bit it's this weird gap on the bottom it has to do partially, at least with that, um, which is kind of annoying. So you can play around with it to try and get the size that you want it to be um, to get a nice drop cap. You do want to do it with a float so the text actually wraps around it or else it's not a drop cap. It's There's another name, a raised cap, I guess. I don't know. There's a name for the ones that aren't dropping. Um, there are some things coming to CSS that will actually, I think it's called trim letting. There's like, I don't remember what the property is, but there's a thing that will cut off that, um, this extra space. So if you were to select this, like this and this would be cut off and it's actually the height of the rendered letters. We just don't have access to it yet. But I think if we had that, it would be much easier to get things to be the size we want them to be for this type of stuff. Uh, so yeah, you could use a span and, and pull off the same type of effect. I just like any time I don't have to access my HTML to be able to do something like this, I like it. Um, and even this, like I'm doing it like this, like me, you could even have like a drop class, a drop cap class on your paragraph. And then you just, anytime you want to drop cap, you just use that class. And I think that makes more sense for me because it's much easier, like if, if it's a personal project, that's one thing. But if you're working on something as a team and then you're like, oh, you have to use this span. And then so they have to, every time somebody wants it, they have to put in the text, then they have to go into the text and add a span and add a class to that span. It's so much easier that if you just drop like here and then class equals uh, drop cap and it's just there. So you don't have to worry about like you're adding a class to the paragraph and that's it. Um, and if you were to do that, like your markups, your, your, whoopsie, your CSS is also a lot easier. Um, you wouldn't need 
this whole thing, you could just do um, like drop dot drop cap first letter and that would work perfectly fine. Um, so I'm just doing it as a little bit like this. This is almost like if I was trying to do this with a WordPress theme where I couldn't, or like something that's generating content. And that's also the thing with an article like this, a lot of the time it's gonna be generated content. So you wouldn't even be able to put a span there anyway, or you, I think you probably, it's a pain in the butt anyway, um, if you wanted to. So like this is something, if you're using generated content, which articles generally would be, every article coming in, is just gonna work automatically, which is handy. Kevin Toronto developer columns is a property of grid or which layer it is columns is columns. It's its own thing. It doesn't, it's just columns. Um, so you don't need flex. You don't use grid. You just use columns. And actually I've seen cool examples of using columns with grid. It's just because of the breaking stuff. Sometimes it gets a little awkward, but you could lay out a grid within your columns and do some like you, and it, it's really weird how, cause Okay, let's say that my body has, the article body has the columns on it. So like you could net inside of your thing that has two columns, you could actually nest a grid and the grid gets broken up across the two columns. It's really wild. And if I've tried making a demo to do it and it was just breaking my head against the wall, but I, I, if you could get it to work and, and harness it um, for what you need, it's kind of neat. Like you could set up a single grid for a form and then use columns to actually get it to be two and then one and two, like one and two columns automatically without needing a media query to rearrange your grid. It's it's cool. It's just it takes a bit of setup to actually get it to work. Uh, can we get the source code? I could tr put it on. I'll, I'll at the end of the stream. I'll copy and paste it into a code pen, and I can share the link there. Kevin can use display inline block. Then you can use margins on any side. What do you mean? Fred, Fred, like why would I want display inline block for what? Is there a rows property? No, only columns. Ian, yeah, Fle columns been around forever. Vertical align text top. For that, I don't think it would. Oh, um, we could try that. I'm, I don't use vertical line for text top. We could try. See, because I actually think they are lining up pretty much along the top. Uh, display block. No. Oh, it doesn't like this. Uh. Oh, it's because my block. That was some nice linting there. Thank you, VS Code. M my May? Yeah, the stream will be available afterwards. Um, I, I mean, yeah, you could, I, I could do, uh, I mean, display, I could do a display block to display a uh, block just so it, um, it's floating, so it doesn't matter. And then margin top. I don't know what would happen now. 0.25 m. So yeah, you get you can sort of start playing with it and try and get it to. But you always get like it's one of those things where you do it becomes like a bit of a, a, a game where you're trying to like line it up and then play with the font size and play with the margin. It's all a bit of a nightmare. Um, and if I didn't do the float, so let's say we took the float off, um, and then this is an inline block it's not really going to help because we like that's terrible right so you really want to have and this is that space that i said when you select something that extra space on the top and the bottom um that comes in so you definitely if you're doing the drop cap you definitely want to have a float on there um but then yeah you could play around with with different stuff after that if you want to line, try and line it up a little bit better Um, yeah, we finally have support for everything these days, which is nice. Um, another thing, just since we did first letter, that you can also do is, let's just take the same selector. 
Uh, one thing I'm going to say, I did first child here on purpose. People learn about drop caps in the world of design, um, so design software, and then they do this, um, where they give every paragraph a, a drop cap. Please don't do that. <laughs> Um, drop caps are used as a way to draw attention to the beginning of something. It has a like if I'm looking at this, first of all, to me it just looks really ugly. It's to say it's sort of you learn about drop shadows and you start using drop shadows like crazy and you start experimenting with it. Um, but drop caps should not be used everywhere. They should be used at the beginning and that's it. Um, because like they they bring they they attract the eye. So you see the title, you see this, and then your eye is being pulled to the drop cap. So the problem now is, as I'm reading this, my eye is being pulled to the V. Like I'm looking here, but that V is like staring at me and it wants my eye to go to the V. And then as I'm here, like I see all these big things that are popping out. So it doesn't help anything, it just hurts. So like if ever you do decide to use a drop cap, make sure it's only in one paragraph and that's it. Because now we, we get this, we go to here, my eye is here. These are always um, pull quotes and block quotes and that type of thing are always bigger just because it's for like skimming and stuff. It helps add a bit of visual interest to the page um, that, you know, we can pull ourselves through the article and do different stuff with it. But just just watch out with um, drop caps and don't do anything silly with them. Um, and that same piece of advice goes to what I'm about to do, which is this. Um, you probably won't use it very much, but you do have first first line as well. Um, so you try and in in the magazine and print world you don't usually do first line but um, a lot of time it's like a certain amount of letters or words will be uppercase but that could be something you use um, that could be kind of interesting whoops I keep selecting the wrong window when I'm making stuff bigger and smaller there we go so you can see the first line became uppercase and it's interesting because like as that first line changes it's adapting automatically so it's whatever's on the first line of text will be uppercase and then everything else. And it's just, as the screen size is adapted, it adapts with it. So it's a pretty cool um, pseudo element right there. But it probably, I don't, I haven't run into many use cases for it, but it is something that we have access to. Casey, first time watching. Well, welcome. I'm glad that you found it. Uh, you're a full-time front end dev web dev with a front end focus and you've already learned so much that's awesome great can you use sass to remove that fake beard um first line is bold ah yeah first line is bold so you can do that too um that that could actually probably look better than all caps font wait we're using let's let's, let's do an 823 because we we can that's way too much the joy of variable fonts, right? So you can do something like that. That that actually, I think, makes more sense. Bold looks pretty good there. There we go. Super cool. I love this type of stuff. <laughs> um, and I, we do have a media query in here, um, but it's just for the, my grid and making sure things are on the grid. Like, I love that this can be done without a media query. Oh, I just got an Amazon package delivered, I think. Could you try initial letter two? Can we do initial letter? Is initial letter a thing? I don't think initial letter. Let me see. MDN initial letter. First letter. I don't think we have something that does more than one letter, do we? I think the only one we have is first letter. Alfonso, no, we only have first line. We don't have anything else. Josh Friedman, I do those once a month on Twitch. Um, so the next one is, and you have to be in my Discord to submit um, websites for it. And if I open this, I could, no, that's not the right one. Let me open that and then go to my calendar. The next website review session is on July 8th over on Twitch. Um, they're at 1 p.m. Eastern that I do them. Um.
Oh, Safari has initial Safari's had uh, now now that Paul said that I think Safari's had initial. We should be able to find initial letter CSS. Oh, there it is. We found it now. So here, do do do. First letter, first letter. Everything's talking about first letter and not initial. Um, let me just see. Oh wait, it's true. I, I could change the line height of the one that I did for the first letter. Initial letter two. So yeah, it's only Safari that supports it, right? I think they've had it forever too. But if it's only the first, first one you're doing, you can just use the first letter anyway. So that might be why the browsers aren't doing it. Um, oh, it's only in the technical. I think they've had it for a while though, haven't they? Or maybe this is, I don't know. Um, yeah, I'm just curious what, why you'd want to use initial letter over first letter. Because usually you don't want to drop, unless you're doing, I guess, the first word, but there'd be no, way to you'd have to play with it every single time if it's always the first word as the drop if you want to submit your work for reviewing it um it, it's on my discord and it's only the day of actually that's, i'll show you guys how to do it um i think my discord's probably linked in the description below uh, so when you join there's a welcome channel and in the welcome channel you can add roles uh, doo -doo -doo. So here you can add your role to tell us what type of developer you are, if you want. Um, then here, there's this role right here. So if you choose, you, you get the role, you just click on it. So if I click that, like I removed it, I click that, it adds the role to my account. Um, if you have that role enabled, when I open the channel where you can submit your reviews, um, it it's you get a notification. So when I open it, you'll get a notification within Discord that the channel has been opened and we'll be doing some reviews. Uh, I could also get the link to that. I'll... <laughs> one second. I always check, I don't want to check status. Invite people, there we go. Uh, edit invite link so it doesn't expire. Copy. And there we go. You can join the Discord with that link. I should link my Discord on my website. I think it's the only thing that's missing. All right. <laughs> Thank you, QV. My GitHub link is not working? Huh. Whoops. <laughs> I guess if you look up, if you look me up, you'll probably find me. Um, just with a Google search, I guess. I don't have tons of stuff on there, but. Is it better to code with a Windows machine? Mm, no, probably not. It's a bit more work, to be honest. Uh, it depends what you're doing. Let's start there. <laughs> um, but you, you. If you start getting into a lot of the builds and stuff, you're probably gonna have to do the subsystem, the Linux subsystem, which it work. It's better than what we used to have to do, which was, you know, you couldn't pretty much do it. Um, and the, the issue is just like so much backend stuff and um, all the other stuff going on is based on Linux and Mac is based on either Unix or Linux. Um, so it's all built, like it's how their systems work, whereas Windows isn't. So Windows did make their subsystem for Linux uh, which helped the first version I think was pretty terrible, but since the two, it's not bad and you can sort of get by. <clears throat> um, but I mean, you can, you can, you can use whatever you want pretty much. Kava, thank you. Oh, I can take that off here too. I forgot. Now that we passed the 300, we don't need to have the sub counts on anymore. Oh, and you can see, we can move that over to here. There we go. And I can move the chat over to here because we're back to full screen face. Uh, the Windows file system is, yeah. And even with this, the, um, I've had problems with line breaks. The biggest issue I've run up to actually is just the line breaks uh, are different, right? So sometimes that actually is really annoying. Richard, the full stream will be available. I, I think it's, if it's not available immediately after I finish, it's just however long it takes YouTube to process it, and then it will be available. React Native on WSL2 is a pain. Oh, okay. So 
Um, Nando, oh, I have a video on the, the marker pseudo element. It's not that old either, I don't think. The not selector, yeah, we can look at that really fast. Um, it's good the, the OS, the subscriber count didn't go down when we, yeah. <laughs> I don't think there is an easy coding language pro forever. Um, let's look quickly at the not selector and then I'll be having to get going, but we can do that. Um, so the not selector, um, what's a good example that I could use it here that's not like a complex selector. It's basically like to exclude something. Um, so if we looked here and we, so the star, when I, okay, let's just come here and let's just say, uh, let's just go all the way down. If I say star and the color is uh, red, it's gonna select everything and make, the, the stars just select everything. So select everything and make the color red. So everything gets changed to red. If I add the not here, so not, I can exclude things from that. So it says select everything, but do not select my block quote. So select everything, except it's not working of course, why not? Oh, color's a bad example. Uh, let's do background. Um, it's because color's not working because of inheritance. I think. Oh, that's not working either. Ah, come on. What's a uh, border? <laughs> border. Uh, two, because that's selecting the body. Uh, two pixels, solid red. There we go. Okay, we can finally see it. Uh, so we're not relying on inheritance and the body is not getting it. Um, so if I take that out and we take the knot off, there we go. Uh, everything is getting a border on it. And then if I add the knot block quote, it means the block quote is not getting it. And then we could also, you can chain stuff here. So not H1. Um, so the H1 and my block quote aren't getting it and stuff like that. Um, we also have others, like we have an is and where selector now, which are the opposite as well. So they're kind of cool. Um, I have, I don't have a video that goes into how I name my things. I've talked about it a lot though. I just use um, a lot of numbering systems. So like 400 is a base, 900 is more bold or darker if it's colors. And then we'll, so like, I, you know, I usually have a bit more robust. So it'd be like 400, 500, 600, 700. Um, it's just a system I like. So like font size, 400, 500, 600, we're just getting bigger and bigger. Um, and then the other way, three, two, one would be smaller and smaller. And then with my colors, four would be my base color, 500's the darker version of that, 600's even darker. And then if I go the other direction, it's the other way around. Uh, the will change property. So um, this, the will change property is if you're gonna animate something, um, you're letting the browser know ahead of time that it's going to be animated uh or chain like there's some it's usually for animations or transitions because it means that that thing can change um you do if i remember correctly and i hope i'm not mixing this up with another property which i might be i should uh, is it will change i know there's one of them that you shouldn't use too often um and you basically want to use it is it will change i don't want to say the wrong thing um, MDM will change. Yeah, okay, it is will change. So you don't want, yeah, uh, this is the MDM is the same. Will change is intended to be used as a last resort in a, in order to deal with existing C uh, performance problems. So you don't want to start you putting will change on everything just because that thing is going to transition or change or do whatever. Like there's something animating with it. Um, it's if there's a perform so say when you go to use that thing and it's all janky or something first of all you might be doing a suboptimal way of animating it or transitioning it um, but if there's performance issues that are happening because of that you can use will change the issue is if you start doing it everywhere when something has will change my understanding is the browser actually renders out the entire thing like it figures out the whole animation before the animation actually happens. So it does all the math, it does all the calculations. So when you actually go to animate that, it it's already, it's done the calculations ahead of time. So it's nice and you have good performance. The problem is if you use will change all over the place, because these are all things that will be changing, it has to do all that math ahead of time. And it's actually gonna hurt the per overall performance of your site. 
So don't use will change just because you it's something you're transitioning or animating. Only use it if there's an existing performance issue that you think it can help with. And even then I would say be careful with it a little bit. Um, but yeah, it, I mean, it, it obviously has its reasons for existing, but just be careful. Ra one games. I do not have any courses on Udemy. Um, I have courses on Scrimba and I have courses on my own platform, but nothing uh, anywhere else. The time profit not can be used in all browsers. Yes. I think even Internet Explorer. Maybe I'm wrong on that though. But please, I mean, look at your analytics and, and don't stress too much about Internet Explorer. Ali K, I like that. It makes the browsers it makes the browsers do too much work if you're using it everywhere, yeah. Rado. So I answered the question earlier, so I'll give the same answer I gave before. Um, I don't want to get too deep into the whole Tailwind discussion, but I see why people really like it. Um, and I, you know, I think it's a good solution uh, if that's the type of thing you like, but it's definitely not for me. How can we give a transition to an element when it goes display block to none? You can't because the browser doesn't. So you have to think. The, if you have to be able to animate something, the browser needs to know what the end state is before it actually gets there. So if you're going from display block to display none, like say you're going from 100 pixels to 200 pixels, the browser knows you, you can't you can't do anything um, with like a height auto. You can't use it for animate because the browser only knows what the height auto is when the height gets there. So uh, if you had a height of zero and you want to animate to a height of auto. It has, it only knows the auto height once it's there. So it doesn't, when it tries to do, like say you'd say to do it over one second, well, it doesn't know how far it needs to go in one second. So it can't do that animation. Um, so that's why there are JavaScript libraries and JavaScript stuff you can do if you need to do that. Um, sometimes there's other solutions as well, but yeah, we can't, if it's, you're changing display properties, you can't animate it. If you're changing heights, if you're doing things with auto values, you can't because the browser only knows that result once it hits that point. So that's why we can't. Stars, the universal selector, exactly. Will Johnson, I don't know if we're ever gonna have a CSS4. There's, there's no, uh, there's some people talking about perhaps doing it, but it's more of a marketing. If we ever get a CSS4, it's more of them trying to market things and try and hype up because CSS3 was such a big like hyped event uh, when it happened. So like if there ever is a CSS4, it's just about sort of saying like, look, we have all this new stuff, but there's the way CSS works now is everything is a, on, like there are, they're working on the, the level five spec of color and they're working on the level two spec of grid. So like everything's on its own now. Do I get tired of what I think about Tailwind? Um, the contain property. Um, so contain is saying that, so contain has lots of possible values to it, but it's basically saying like on a normal layout, everything affects the other parts on the layout. So if you have, right, so you have a box here and then a box here and then a box here. And like the way those are all in the, and like what's inside the middle box affects everything here, which also affects other things. When you use contain, you're sort of telling the browser that this is a self-contained piece of content and that it doesn't have any influence on what's outside of it. Um, and this can be good for performance reasons if you're animating or transitioning or doing stuff within that box. Because if what's happening inside that box is not affecting the rest of the page, normally what happens is a lot of different things we can transition or animate, they cause repaints and then you're repainting the entire page. So if you're saying contain this to this one area and this is not going to affect the rest of the page, it won't repaint the entire page. It's only gonna repaint what's inside that contain thing. Um, but that's why you have layout, you have um, re uh, paint, uh, you have style. There's different things you can set for contain. So you're telling the browser, is it just the paint? Is it the layout? Like what is contained about it too? So you do have to tell the browser that. 
Arginus Jimenez. Yeah, CSS and HTML now, they're both on rolling releases and everything's in its own little subsection and is releasing based on, on that. Yeah, Matthews, I found that out and then I was going to make a video on that and decided not to just because I think if all of a sudden, if you have lots of buttons that are, are doing that, you could hurt the overall performance of your site. I'll just live with the blurry text. Blue Watermelon, do you prefer style components or CSS in React? Which should you, one should you use? I mean, use, when you say CSS in React, do you just mean writing CSS in the normal way? Uh, I would argue that you could do both. <laughs> Uh, you can have a global style sheet and have style components for individual things. Any alternative? What's wrong with me? Why do people hate media queries so much? I mean, I, I, I minimize the amount of media queries I use, uh, but there's nothing wrong with a media query. You know, if you, if you need to change your layout, you have a breakpoint, things need to change around. And there's all, like I did, you know, I made my columns using the columns thing. So I wasn't using a media query for that, but I was changing my grid setup with, with it because it was the easier way to do it. Um, you could get creative with Flexbox and, or with grid. And there's lots of things with those, with wrap and other stuff that sort of make media, you don't need as many media queries maybe. There's nothing wrong, even responsive text, like please just use media queries, like change your font sizes within a media query. There's nothing wrong with that. Marissa Clar Clarity, were you, uh, I was about to leave and now you're asking your parent selectors and I haven't tried this yet and I think I can do it. Uh, so I'm gonna, let's try this out. I think it's part, oh wait, what's this little button do? Um, I don't, give me one second, uh, flags, oops, Chrome, I don't know if it's behind a flag or not. Uh, let me just check one, hmm, okay, let's see if this works. We're gonna try it, it might just fail completely. Um, Chrome Canary, I think somewhere, can you guys see my screen? I can't see the chat anymore. Yeah, okay, you can see my screen and let me find my chat window fast so I can... I haven't tried this yet. This just might be a total fail. I've also lost my chat, there's the chat. Um, so let's just say, uh, paragraph with an A. Uh, oh wait, one second. P, lorem, 10, and then that didn't work. P, lorem 10, zero. Lorem 10, there we go. And then what we'll do is this one, we'll do a P, lorem five. Oh, you know what? Uh, P, lorem five plus A with a lorem three. Uh, we have to do that here too. Plus A, lorem three, four, three plus P lorem 10. All right, so we have two paragraphs. One of them has a link in it. Uh, if I set that up right, which I apparently didn't do. Oh, I did another P. I should have just done another lorem. Okay, there we go. So we have two paragraphs. One of them has that. So, I don't, and I don't know if this is gonna work. Uh, if we do P has a color red, is it gonna work? If it doesn't work, this is what it would eventually be. It doesn't work, okay. So maybe there's a flag I have to enable. I am in Chrome Canary. I thought they enabled it. If anybody knows, let me know in the chat. Um, but we will have something like this in the not too distant future. So as far as I'm concerned, that's pretty close to a parent selector. So we're choosing the paragraph based on what is here. So, I mean, you might be going, well, that's that's not exactly a parent selector, but I'm, I'm choosing the parent of the link. Um, so another example that would be more like parent selector would be if I had a, um, let's say I had dot, dot columns uh, as that, and then in here I have three divs. So we do um, div times three. And you just have three normal divs that are doing whatever, you have a display flex. But then you could have a class on one of them of card, whoops, class is equal to card. And then you have your content on that. So here you would have dot columns. Oh, you know what has, maybe this, do I have to do that? 
So it'd be columns has uh, dot card. And then it's, you know, you have, it's still not working. Anyway, I, I have to look into it more. I haven't used it as I said, uh, but then you could, so I'm choosing the parent in this case of the columns. It's not a perfect parent selector, but it's something that they're they're working on and I need to figure out how it works, but it's something that they're working on. So we will sort of have a parent selector in the not too distant future. Um, Marissa, you can, yeah, it's definitely, yeah. And I, it might be a while. There was a, I thought it was never going to happen just based on all the talk that was going on about it. And there was a lot of performance issues uh, with it. And now, and now it's happening ish. So if you look it up, you'll, I, I was on Twitter where I saw them mentioning it. So maybe it's not, it's, if it, I thought it was in Canary, but maybe it's behind a flag or maybe something else. But I'm really looking forward to that being a thing. JS crash course for you? I'm not the right guy for that. There's a lot of, you know, I think Brad Travis, he has lots of really good JavaScript content. Um, Web Dev Simplified has really good JavaScript content. DevEd probably has a crash course on JavaScript too, no? I'm sure he does. There's a lot of good JavaScript stuff out there. Parent selectors break the cascading part of CSS. It's powerful. Well, if you were saying select just like the general parent, you could run into issues with it, I guess. And, but even, it's it doesn't break it. It's just, I mean, you could say color red and then I think the I think it works with the cascade. You just have to think about it in the right way. So like in that example I was looking at, if I said, if the columns have a card in it, I could change the font color for all of like as like the whole thing. It's still going to cascade down through that selector. Yes, Web Dev Simplified has a very in-depth JavaScript course. Um, there's, I think, a beginner and, and advanced sections to it. There's tons of projects. So if you're looking for a JavaScript course uh, and not like a YouTube crash course, I would definitely check that out. CSS best practices. Yeah, I should do a video on that. Do I have a scream schedule sounds? Every Monday I'm live on, sorry, I'm moving back and forth a bit. Every Monday I'm live on Twitch. That's my my streaming schedule. Monday, 9.30 a.m. Eastern. We're doing a special YouTube one today for hitting 300,000 subs. The quote CSS property, I talked about it. I mean, the, there's, it's not so much a property as something that we can play around. Like it's more, there's like the open quote, close quote, um, like I use today, tech hacks and tricks. IDMX220, I opened up Behance and I put in magazine spread and just found the, took the first one I think looked good. Is and where, um, is and where are awesome selectors. Is, so it's, it's just instead of chaining your selectors together where you do like h1 comma h2 comma h3 comma h4 you can do like is and then well you chain them there too um but it's more for like nest so you'd say like say you have like your general stylings h1 h2 h3 h4 and then you want to have a different set of stylings okay this would be so much easier to explain in code so let's say and this isn't the best example but let's just say you have general stylings h1 h2 h3 h4 and then you do whatever style value whatever i'm not doing we're not looking at a realistic example um then let's say you want you had like your main article or even you know we're you have an article and then you want to redefine and you have article h2 article h3 because you need to change them and then you do you're overwriting the value there so what you could do instead is article is um, and then, so it's article is h1, h2, h3, and you can do that instead. So it's the, you know, that, that's the equivalent selector. Uh, this has specificity on it. So the highest, so if this was like a class here, whatever the highest ranking thing is in here is the specificity for this selector, um, which is just to be careful with that because you could run into issues. 
then there's also where, which is a zero specificity selector. So nothing inside of this gets any specificity on it. Um, so you can use the where like that too. So is and where, they both do the same thing. Just one has an effect on specificity. The other one has no effect on specificity. Um, which also means you can create like resets that have no specificity hit, which is kind of interesting. Uh, there is, I'm trying to think, that works. Is there another way we would use where? Um, yeah, I mean, there's other ways I think you could do it with some sort of creative stuff, but this is, to me, the, the better way to do it than starting with the where most of the time, or the more useful way. But yeah, we have, we do have that. Christian, is it anything wrong with using tables over grid on real tables, like in an admin panel? Well, to me, an ad, when you say an admin table or admin panel, like if it's a real tables, like an Excel sheet, then tables make sense. Like here's like you're displaying the information. If you mean like the layout of the admin panel, I would use grid just because it's so much easier. This is a, um, uh, it's a fake tree, but no green screen. I can touch it. <laughs> is it moving? Yeah. There's no natural light down here, so it wouldn't survive too well if it was real. <laughs> no problem, Jose. <laughs> I have real plants upstairs where there's natural light, but my wife mostly takes care of those. Don't, uh, Kenny, don't, don't modify the height or width of the elements. Use the scale instead. So transform scale, and then it won't affect the elements that are around it. Ronel, mobile first all the way. Zoom on hover. So it depends what you're zooming in. You could use transform scale to do it. I do that in a lot of videos. Um, or if it's more of like a background thing too, there's, there's other ways of doing that too. What mic do I use? I noticed that you're using Excel. Yeah, um, it's, I forget. I don't think the, is it? Oh, it is. It's upside down though. A, AT4053B. Look that up and you'll find it. I just, it's, um, it's a shotgun mic that's made for interviews. So I think the sound's okay. And I like that it could be out of frame. Did you finish the JavaScript course with Zell? I've done Zell the, the course, yes. I didn't actually, when I say finish it, I've done, I've gone through his course material. I didn't finish it because by the time I got through it, he hadn't finished the course. Um, and I haven't looked at the newest material that he has in there. Panda, you're just starting. Just take it easy. Don't feel overwhelmed. There's tons of stuff. There's always more to learn. So don't feel like you have to learn it all. Learn, like, make sure you understand what you're learning before you move on. Because there's always, like, right now I've been teaching it for seven years now, and I'm still learning something new all the time. So, you know, like, you're always, always, always going to be learning. There's always going to be something else. Don't look to move on and learn more. Look to understand what you're learning really well, and then find the next thing to learn. Uh, the is and where putting a space. Um, so where, when I just did it now, I had my article space where because I want to select the children of my article. So that's the reason why there's a space. Aman RJ, look at my video that I put up last week or two weeks ago. Um, it goes pretty in depth in it all. Audio technical, that's it. Yeah. Uh, what is made, mar what's margin scroll for? Uh, margin scroll is like, uh, if you have, say you, you're using anchor links and you're using smooth scrolling, or even if you're not using smooth scrolling, but like when you use anchor links within a page, so when you click and it brings you somewhere else in the page, if you don't, it always lines up at the very, very top of the page. So if you want a gap, so when it gets there, it leaves a space on the top, you would use your margin scroll or scroll margin or whatever it's called.
Styleable HTML form elements will be implemented in the spec. There's talk of it. I don't know where they're getting. Um, there are some things you can start. There, um, Firefox has implemented it and Chrome is working on um, where you can use accent color um, to do some stuff. But it's it's it might only be in Firefox Nightly. I don't even know if it's made it into like the, the real Fire. I think it's only Firefox Nightly and it's not even behind a flag in Chrome. It's like it, it it's they're working on it in Chrome, but I don't even think it's in uh, behind a flag within. Um, uh, but yeah, there's there's going to be an accent color that you can use and it will style the background color uh, to, like for like checkboxes, radio buttons, things like that. Tarun, I was here. We can go quickly. Let's go find the layout. I finished it, though. Uh, so I, I actually let's just go here. I can show you what I did. I'll share. Oh, yeah, I said I would share the code. So let me grab the code um, and do that. But here I was just taking this layout and trying to make it into a responsive layout. And I didn't do the glasses thing, but we got this. So I think it looks pretty good. And then it shrinks down and then we get that. So yeah, let's grab. So actually, I'll sit, keep this code pen. Let's go find VS code. There it is. Copy paste go over to here and we'll grab from here to here copy paste and we also need my google font um, i'm going to do it the lazy way uh, we don't even need to pre-connect really copy uh, there are ways of putting the google font in like in the html head but i'll just stick it there and it should work um, you'll just have to come in with your own picture but I'll save that and we'll drop that in the chat. Oh, that's fine. Go back to my face. Um, here you go. There you go. So if anybody wants the code that we worked on today, there you go. Lucky, thank you very much of, for the, the super chat. What do I think of the Opera browser? Pretty, I test on it occasionally just to make sure things are working. <laughs> I don't, I don't really use it at all, so I don't have much of a opinion on it, I guess. Um, I haven't played with Astro yet via Viorel. I haven't, uh, it looks cool, but I haven't tried it for anything yet. Lucky, thank you for all keeping you motivated to code. You're welcome, I'm glad I could help. How long till container queries are widespread? Um, it all depends on how fast they make progress on the proposal. They're still like looking right now, container queries, they're looking for like, how are you gonna use them and what are different things you could come up and do with them? I thought it was all based on size. There's some really cool things that they're starting to think about that you could use them for. Um, so it could even like, yeah, it looks really, really neat what they're planning on doing with it. So, um, it's going to be a while probably just because they have so much stuff to figure out but there's a lot of momentum behind it so i could see it moving pretty quickly i use fire um andreas asked what firefox version i use i use firefox nightly um, most of the time just because then i get access to all the fun stuff firefox 90 has non-system form elements oh there we go Victor, thank you for the super chat as well. Is it possible to encounter a situation that you have to use an important tag in a well? Yes, definitely. Um, I'll use, I'll put important on, um, uh, what are they called? Utility classes for colors. Um, like if, I'm, if I have a utility classes for colors that are gonna change the color of my text, I think it sort of makes sense to have important on those because if I'm going into my HTML and I'm adding that class, it means I want that color to be on there regardless of whatever color is being set on there. And you might have something that's like somewhat high, spec like a higher specificity thing that's setting the color. It might be like a class select, like you're choosing, I don't know, dot card H1. So all of the cards look that way, but you might have a one card in one situation that needs a different color for whatever reason it is. And a utility class, you want to overwrite it. I think important makes sense there um, because you're not going to add that class unless you want that one specific thing to happen. So for me, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, I don't think there's any issues with that. 
Um, and if you want to remove that color, you're not going to try and overwrite it with your CSS. You're just going to go into the HTML and take the class off. So, uh, you know, I don't see, I see important. We always teach people not to use important early on because then they don't use it properly. They don't, you, you start abusing it. You get into specificity wars. It becomes a band aid, and then you're just using it within higher specificity to overwrite it again. It's a mess. So at the beginning, don't use important, but once you have a better idea of you have well-organized CSS and things are working well, you can probably run into situations where it's not a bad thing to have. I've played a little bit with Svelte, but I haven't done a lot with it, um, much to Brent's dismay, <laughs> I'm sure. Uh, I have played with it though. It was cool. I liked it, what I did with it. I just haven't had time to really dive in um, and do more with it. I'm not a, f Brave is a browser I'm really conflicted about. Um, yeah. I just, I don't like, I don't, I think they're dishonest with their business model, personally. Um, it sounds cool with the ad blocking and then that they're, I don't know, I, I just find it, I think it's a dishonest system um, with how they've set it up, with how they're ad blocking and then the re other ads that, I don't know, it seems weird to me. Um, Hassan fares the difference between a pseudo class and a pseudo element. Uh, the easy way to explain that is if with the before and after pseudo elements. So as the before and after, if you look in the DOM after you use it, you'll see them in there. So it's actually injecting a new element into the your your DOM into the HTML. Um, whereas a pseudo class is selecting something based on different states. So, um, like, and hover is a nice example. Is it hovering? Is it not hovering? It's not changing the HTML. It's just changing based on the state of that element. So it's a class that's being, it's sort of, it's a it's a fake class because it only exists sometimes. Whereas a pseudo element is being injected in. It's harder to explain that when you start looking at like first letter, first line, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if you look at the shadow DOM that it's actually like injecting span tags or something. And that might be why. Am I ever going to talk about making a CSS library for design? No, it's too much work. <laughs> Dion C93, is it good practice to do the box sizing border box with the universal selector? 100%. I do it every every single time. If I think if they were to redo things, that would be the default, but we, we can't redo things. So we just have to start our CSS files with that. High above sea level. Yeah, normally I'm on Twitch. Today's a special YouTube stream. Uh, the dishonesty with Brave. So Brave blocks ads, uh, but then they give you bat tokens. But how do I say I'm say, like for example, on YouTube right now, you, I don't know with Brave, does, does Brave block you ads from running on YouTube? Just curious. I don't know. I don't use it. Uh, but let's just say I don't run ads on my own website, but let's say I ran ads on my website but I didn't sign up for their bat tokens. How would I get anything from the ad? Like where their own, like where, as soon as you're blocking ads for free content, you're making it less likely that that source is gonna keep making free content because there, nobody can make stuff for free all the time. Um, you know, it, you need some source of income to be able to continue doing something. So when you start blocking ads on stuff, you're, it's sort of like watching, you know, you either watch, commercials on TV, which even you're paying for your TV and you're still getting commercials, or you sign up for like Netflix and you pay Netflix a monthly fee. So it's a little bit like you watch my videos on YouTube, you get ads with them, or you can sign up for YouTube premium or whatever, or you buy a course and then there's no ads. So, you know, there's, it's the, the creator can still be compensated one way or the other. When you start introducing, we're going to be a middleman that's going to take our own ads in here instead of the ones they want to run. And then we might redirect the money to them if they signed up for, for bats. Like, I don't know. What is the music that's playing in the background? Uh, good question. This song is called Fumes by Ocean Jams. That's what's currently playing. Um, I'm John, I'm going to have a video on that at one point and hopefully the not too distant future for my default project template. And I'm going to share it with everybody. 
I prefer, um, Michael's asking for HTML, CSS development, Firefox or Chrome. I prefer Firefox because their CSS dev tools are still better. Chrome's making a huge improvement, but Firefox has some like linting and stuff in there, which is cool. Jimmy, you have 200 in Brave rewards, but you're getting that as uh, someone else is saying $4. So like you're getting it as the person who's seeing the content, but what about the content creator? Russ, I normally stream Mondays on Twitch at 9.30 a.m. Eastern. Um, using Flex, is it required? Media creators are never required, but it just depends. Well, Brave will block ads, but then they still show ads, but it's them who are showing the ads and it's them that are profiting from those ads. They're, they become the primary profiter from the ads rather than whoever should be getting the money, right? That's my understanding of how it works. And then they say that they'll redirect some of it to the user, so whoever's using the browser gets a little bit, and then they redirect some to, like, how does the person whose site that ad is running on get any money from it? That's what I want to know. Why does overflow need to be set to hidden in order for navbar to be visible? I don't know. <laughs> I've never had that issue. Uh, Andres, I have a video that looks at five things that I, mistakes I see people make, um, even though I think one or two of them I would change. <laughs> M Casco, how do you make Jamstack sustainable? I mean, do you just mean when a project becomes huge? Like, there's a lot of really big websites out there that are built on the Jamstack. I think even, I could be wrong, but I think, um, what's it called? I think Smashing Magazine might have gone Jamstack. I think they have like a whole article and a whole thing on how they went Jamstack. So like if Smashing Magazine can go Jamstack, I think most sites could. Add DT, I, I, I've, I like Twitch better for streaming. Stop dying. You, as far as I'm concerned, you should never put an empty div or empty span tag on something. That's what before and after are meant for. And having empty elements, um, first of all, it's it means if you want to put, like say you're doing a decoration on something. So every time you have a block quote, you want this little design element that's gonna be next to it. Um, if you're doing it with a span, an empty span or empty div, you have to remember to put that there every single time. Whereas if you want that design element just to be there, you just put it on that CSS class or on your block quote or whatever. And every time you use that class, it just appears there. So you don't have to do your, you, if it's a decorative element, it should be coming in through your CSS and not through empty spans that are then styled in your CSS. It, uh, to me, it doesn't make any sense. It's one of the things I really dislike about Tailwind. Um, and I know the guy who made Tailwind says that, well, if you just do it this way, it works, but it's like, yeah, but then you have to follow that pattern in your HTML and remember to do that every time. Um, to me, that's a, a flaw, a big flaw in Tailwind is that you don't have pseudo elements. I don't know if I have a favorite font these days, Priag. Uh, my chat just jumped. Um... Stony Eagle, my problem is ads that they say are intrusive and sometimes take over, especially when YouTube shows six to 10 ads on a 15 minute video. Yeah, I mean, that is an issue. Uh, I agree, I pay for YouTube premium. So when I go on a, a device that doesn't have my, I'm not logged in, I'm just like, oh, that's that's unexpected. Uh, so I do know ads can be intrusive. I try to keep mine to a minimum. Um, YouTube's auto, when you have mid rolls enabled, YouTube automatically places them. But then as a creator, you can go in and add or remove or move them around. Um, so I always try and limit it to one per 10 minutes type of thing uh, at the most. So if it's like a 15 minute video, I would probably not have more than one running uh, just because I agree it can be very intrusive. And, um, but I've had videos where I go into like the auto placed one and you go to check to see what it did. And it, for some reason, puts like six of them 
within three minutes of the video and then it's like it could be like a 45 minute long video that has six placed within five minutes and then there's nothing else and i don't know how it decides that um but it's kind of annoying uh did you, i see a super oh there it is trond thank you very much for the super chat i appreciate it from norway Thank you very much. Need a complete tutorial on SVG creation logos. I mean, that's then you're getting into the world of, of you're not doing if you're making a logo, you shouldn't be you should be doing it with design software, right? So whether it's in Inkscape, Illustrator, uh, some vector creation software. Oh, there we go. Tailwind has pseudo elements now. That fixes that. I guess I can't complain about that anymore. <laughs> I remember too that they, the people had been asking for it and asking for it and they were always giving the same response that you don't need it. Lior, I'm a big fan of the BIM approach, yep. Um, following a, a something, Airbnb style guidelines are actually really good. So there's nothing wrong with following something like that. Have I ever designed for, for email? Matthew Reed's asking that. Uh, yes, I have, and I'm never gonna make a video on it, and I'm never going, if I can avoid it for the rest of my life, I will. HTM? HTML? I don't know what the question is. Pepper Reed. Paper Engine. My SAS course, it's coming slowly. I'll let you know when it gets closer. Um, you're on one right now. It's getting bigger and bigger. Wish HTML. I mean, maybe check out M, M Casco. Check out the. I'm almost certain it's Smashing Magazine did an article on how they switched over to the Jamstack. So it might give you some insights on how to maintain a bigger project and make sure it's not like a 10 minute build. Media queries or Clamp? How about both? I don't like using Clamp for all my fonts. I think it's hard to control. Um, I do like having it on big font sizes and some other things though. Uh, sorry if I'm missing questions by the way, the chat's going fast. Samet Pala, you accepted any project and how can we contact you? Do you mean to like for me to work on a project? Right now I'm not taking it on any work. I already can't keep up with what I'm working on, so no new projects. Jeremiah Peoples, the camera I'm using is the Sony A6400, which isn't that top end. It's not like a, a super, it, it's a good camera, um, but I know there's a lot better models. Um, but it's, I have the, the picture quality is probably mostly through the lens, which is this Figma, uh, Figma, Sigma 1.6 F fixed, whatever. It's a good lens. That's why the picture looks good. How did I choose SAS? Why not less? Um, so a bit of a backstory. I created my, I, um, I got into SAS primarily from way back when, when, uh, if any of you guys know DevTips, the channel, when Travis was there, um, the reason I started using SAS was cause he was using it. Now, granted he was also using Jade and that didn't get me into that, but um, so that's that's actually how I picked SAS is because that was the first one I saw and then I kept with it It also was po very popular. So I stayed with it, but uh, John Lothar I use Netlify for almost everything just because I mostly deal with static stuff So like I don't need Heroku or Firebase or anything Netlify does everything I need um, if we if I needed something else um i do think that 
Firebase would probably be the first place I would look. Um, I mean, Heroku is set up really well if you're doing uh, Ruby development, right? If you have a Ruby backend, I think. Am I getting that wrong? Uh, which I probably wouldn't have. Well, I don't know. I probably wouldn't touch the backend and would ask someone else. So I guess it would depend there. Um, but yeah, I think if I needed something that had something going on there, I would be starting with Firebase. But I guess it depends too. I don't have any email anything or our Saint Victor. I don't have anything, anything, anything on email design or anything. Jose David Mota. Um, Normalize is really good or Sanitize. They're both sort of based on each other. Um, or sorry, Sanitize. Anyway, look up Normalize or Sanitize. I think it's a good one. Or there's, I've been using lately Andy Bell's modern CSS reset. Thoughts on using JavaScript for using the resize observer? Ah, uh, I don't think it's worth it. I mean, if you really needed to do it, I guess you could. Um, but yeah. Jeremiah Peoples, you have the same setup? Uh, it, the lighting too, maybe? I don't know. I have, I only have one, I have, I have my main light there and then I have a secondary light on the side because if not, the side of my face is too dark, but. Are Gulp and Sass good for beginners? Beginner, beginners for front end development, I would just, I, I like Gulp, I think Gulp's, I, people have moved on to other things. I find Gulp pretty straightforward and easy to use, so I have nothing wrong with Gulp, but I mean, it depends how far into your journey you are when you say beginners. Martin Robinson, you still have one of Travis's t-shirts. That's awesome. I was a big fan of Travis. Or I still am, I guess, but just he's not making content anymore. Why do I use SAS? I used it once, but now I use Stylus. I don't know. I, I learned SAS, I, I loved it, and I never bothered learning anything else. That's why. I think it, it does what I need it to do. I've always enjoyed it. I've never felt like I, I'm missing out when I see what other ones do, so I've just kept using it. They have uh, trouble structuring your projects. How can you improve? Practice makes perfect. <laughs> um, and then asking other people too, if you have people you can talk with or show your work to and say like, you know, look for, I find most of the time when there's issues, it's when you start writing your CSS, you realize you should have done something differently in your HTML. Um, so then you learn from those mistakes too. Front end masters. Yeah, front end masters is pretty cool. I haven't looked at any of their stuff in a long time now, but I liked it um, back when I was, I, I, I had a subscription to them and I enjoyed it. Uh, correct, Ryan James. So I used Flow Spacer there. Um, I used Flow Spacer and I didn't define it in the root on purpose. Uh, but I put, it was Flow Spacer comma like 1M. So if it doesn't find that variable defined anywhere, it's going to go to the fallback. So it's using 1M anywhere I use it. And then within a component, if I need to change the spacing, I can define flow spacer within just that one area. And then it, it's going to sort of live within that block. So it, um, it's pretty powerful to use custom properties that way. Rahul, thank you very much. Yeah, we hit it while we were just, just, just at the beginning of the stream, pretty much. So that was pretty cool. Ismail, if I learn SAS, I don't need CSS. Incorrect. Well, when you say you don't need CSS, what do you mean? I guess, but you need C SAS turns into CSS, so you need to know CSS, like know CSS pretty well before even touching SAS. Um, SAS is like the next step afterward and it you need to know CSS or you can't write any SAS because it is it's just like it's a fancier syntax that does more stuff so just be very careful there I think most people know that VS Code is uh, Microsoft I don't think they hide that at all 
So is GitHub. <laughs> I mean. Um, three to four months, Ravi? Yeah, I think within three to four months. Do I always wear glasses? No. You'll see some videos, I have them, some I don't. It depends if I forgot them upstairs or not. Um, if I took them off now, the chat is a little bit hard to read. I'd probably want to hit Command Plus a couple times to increase the font size. I can read it still, um, but it's not super easy. So, But I, I mean, the nice thing when I'm doing videos, especially, is the font sizes on my screen are really big. So I can, I can easily do videos without having my glasses on. Um, I also don't wear them. If I'm not on the computer, uh, it's like 50-50. If I think of it, I put it on. If I don't, it doesn't bother me if I don't have them on. CSS Demystified will be in a couple weeks. Thank you, I just scrolled and lost. Somebody was complimenting the lighting in the plant, so thank you. WordPress development does not make, WordPress development's been around for what, a 15 years now? At least 10 years. WordPress has been here for 10 years and website developer, WordPress is super cool. Nothing, Any and anyone who says WordPress development's not um, web developer. I mean, I mean, that's, I started freelancing by making custom uh, child themes for WordPress. And just because you can make one with a pre-done theme doesn't mean that that's, you know, a lot of people are getting custom themes or semi-custom themes. And um, it's still like a huge part of the internet. And yeah, I think it's definitely, it doesn't hurt at all. And it just means more, if, if there's easier ways to make websites, it just means people that wouldn't have a website now have a website. It doesn't take away from those who have, are already paying lots of money for them. It might shift around the money a little bit and maybe there's less people using it. Uh, or, you know, you might be able to go to a simpler solution because there's one available now. But for the most part, it just enables more people to have it. I see, oh, there it is. Uh, Chubby Shady, thank you very much for the super chat. Would you rather use inline CSS rules for the rest of your life or be a Java backend engineer for five years using Groovy? So a uh, funny story with Java. That was the first language I tried to learn when I was in high school. I bought a book and I couldn't even get it to print Hello World. Uh, I spent like three weeks trying to like figure out what I was doing wrong and I just couldn't and I stopped. Um, so if I had gotten that to work, maybe this channel would be all backend and Java stuff instead of where we are now. <laughs> um, but so based on that experience, I guess inline rules, but I also don't know what Groovy is. So I, I may, <laughs> uh, so, you know, that would also depend maybe a little bit. Martin, that actually makes me kind of happy that you're, I'm helping you get to know CSS deeply. That makes me ha very happy. BAM. I'm a very big fan of BAM. If you've been watching my channel, uh, if you go back through my content enough, you'll probably see me use, I don't use it all the time, but I do, uh, on bigger projects I do, and I'm a big fan of BAM. Uh, <laughs> Praham, I can't do backend tutorials because I don't know anything that would help with that. I'm not somebody who can talk about backend because I have no experience there. If I had to make a project where I needed some sort of robust backend, I would just hire someone else to do that side of things uh, or collaborate with someone else to do that side of things. Is React Bootstrap bad for CSS? I mean, why React Boots React Bootstrap is just using Bootstrap, no? So uh, that's like saying, is Bootstrap bad for CSS? I learned a lot about CSS by using Bootstrap, so I don't know. Um. No, I don't use it anymore though, so. But should I use Figma before writing CSS? I think you should, if you're really comfortable with CSS, you could definitely design in the browser. If you're not super comfortable with CSS or you're not a designy person, having the layout ready first would probably help. I've been making websites as at least part of my income for 10 years now. Uh, Pujit. Pruidget, I think it's, sorry if I got it wrong. It's been a, it's been a decade that I've been at least part-time making money off making websites. I'm gonna scroll down just a little bit. Uh, Shamar, I think I have two videos that look, two, I have two or three videos that look at grid template areas. They're a bit older, but I definitely have some. Chubby Shady, Grid. If I had to only choose one or the other and had I, I was never allowed to use the other one, I would definitely use Grid. Thank you again for the super chat. Um, I just think it's, it's 
yeah i like it better <laughs> I, th I think that said flex i may i'm working on a video now that's grid versus flexbox um it's taking me a bit longer to put together than i wanted but it's because i want to have a really good answer for it and really good examples for it um and definitely the two of them are very very i if i had to choose i would choose grid but ideally i just keep both and yeah that's ideally can i do a course on web design um I don't know if I'm good enough. <laughs> uh, Gary Simon has lots of good content on the design side of things. Yeah, a lot of people not liking WordPress. WordPress is, is I think it's good for the industry personally. It creates lots of jobs. It doesn't take away jobs. Um, it's a huge part of the industry and it's not going away anytime soon. So if you don't like it, you know, it's, you're gonna have to deal with it at one point, probably. Um, I think it's a good tool that's misused, but it's still a good tool. Florin, welcome to the stream. You just caught the end of it. Welcome though. Thank you for coming in and joining. Yep. Neptonus Solar. Should we learn Bootstrap or in-depth? I mean, don't learn Bootstrap if you don't know CSS, in my opinion. Um, if you know CSS, you can pick up Bootstrap really easily. If you learn just Bootstrap, you're stuck with Bootstrap. You're not going to know how to do something outside of it. You're not going to be able to customize it the way you want to be able to customize it. You're going to have trouble using it, period. You won't be able to use it to its fullest potential. If you learn CSS, Bootstrap, if you needed to use it for something, it's going to be really easy to use. You're going to be able to customize it really easily. You're going to be able to you get the most out of what is there. Um, and that's the same for anything. I think even like Tailwind, something like that, like you might learn stuff more about, like I, I think I know, I think I knew CSS pretty well before I ever used Bootstrap. I learned a lot about CSS by using Bootstrap back in the day because based on like class naming, organization, how they were doing things, because I learned how, I was looking at how they were doing it all um but so like i think there's good ideas that you can gain from these things i think by using them you start getting ideas on how you could do your own css too so i don't think there's anything wrong with playing with them and using them but i would definitely i'm always 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 going to say like like don't don't learn react if you don't know javascript like you know you're you're if it's if you're if what you're learning is built on something else learn what it's built on um because then you can change if you learn react you're sort of stuck with react you don't even know what's react what's javascript if you learn JavaScript, then you can go to React and then switch to Vue and then switch to Svelte. And you can make these, you have to learn a little bit more each time, but you know the core that they're built on top of. So it makes moving around and doing different things much easier. Oh, Rick, it's RA, thank you very much. Very kind of you. All right, guys, I'm going to, uh, is the chat still rolling along, but I'm going to have to uh, get going because it's almost one o'clock here, which is crazy. And I have a few other things I need to do today. Um, Praham, yeah, I could have a video. I w I'm not going to talk about it now because it's a big topic, but we could, I could look at something like that. Um, actually, the, the video that I'm eventually going to come out, which is like my starter template, will sort of go into that a little bit too. Do I know any of the JS frameworks views felt? Um, I've used React. I haven't touched it in a long time now, actually, but I've I've worked on projects with React. Uh, I learned enough view just to play around with it. Um, and, and you know, I built out a little thing with it just to, to see what it was about. And I've touched Svelte, but I haven't done very much with it at all. Um, but even React, like I wouldn't do a React tutorial. Like I've used React, but I'm not, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> it's more time in the documentation and getting things to work than anything else. All right, yeah, I'm gonna have to jump off. Uh, oh, my favorite movie, Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, we can do that one. <laughs> I grew up just a huge Star Wars fanboy, so definitely 
Star Wars. I, I did say I was going to go 30 minutes ago, but now I'm going to go for real because I need to go eat lunch and get some things done. Uh, so thank you all guys, everybody, guys and girls for coming, hanging out, having fun with me. Uh, this was a lot of fun. Uh, again, I usually stream on Twitch. So if you want to, um, it should be linked in the description, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> but you can find me on Twitch pretty easily, I'm guessing. Um, I'd probably link it on my website. I don't even know if I have it there. I'm not very good at marketing myself. But yeah, I'm usually on Twitch Mondays at 9.30 in the morning. And every now and then I'll do this. I see somebody asking me about Bitcoin. I have zero Bitcoin. And I probably never will. <laughs> I just, not my thing. What do I use mostly just, um, my videos are mostly CSS, yeah, if you're new here. Uh, yeah, and thank you guys all for, we got to 300,000. So it was a fun, a good day to stream on. We made it on stream, so that was kind of cool. So uh, thank you all, all for subbing and for being here and for hanging out. And I'll see you all, yeah, I'll be live on Monday and, no, not this Tuesday. The Tuesday after that, I'll have Adam Argyle on Twitch again too. So that should be fun. I think anyway, probably. All right, see everybody. Have a good one. And um, I'll see. <laughs> have you ever felt that CSS is weird? Look up the video, Why is CSS so weird uh, on YouTube? It's by Miriam Susan. It's a delight. All right, bye everybody. I'm gonna switch scenes here. I can, the chat's gonna keep me distracted. So <laughs> I can't with that. We'll put some music back on uh, and I'll put a little outro scene, not much of one. Uh, where's my OBS? There it is. All right, I'm gonna keep getting distracted. So we're gonna do that and lower my mic down. And, oh, you know what though? I didn't update this. Yeah, everybody's telling me my GitHub link is broken. I'm gonna have to go and check that out and see what it's about. Um, yeah, it's not starting soon. We're not starting soon anymore. We're now. There we go. Have a good one, everyone. Bye.